Welcome all in, everybody. We had a big day of crypto on-chain activity, particularly for the top asset in crypto, Bitcoin. Many of you may have already seen the tweet that we put out, but today was the largest day of Bitcoin on-chain transaction and activity thus far in 2024, with three out of the four largest transactions of the year happening today. Uh, with the exception, as I make this image a little bigger, happening on New Year's Day. Uh, so we had, uh, you know, a 15,227 BTC transaction, an 11,124 BTC transaction, which in this case we actually know went to a mining address. Then we had an 11,115 BTC transaction. Uh, the last one, of course, we don't know the uh, origin and the first one we don't know the origin uh, that is kind of the nature of Bitcoin like a lot of networks out there uh, unless there's exact labeling and it's been around for a long period of time we don't always know the source however we do know the address and I'm gonna skip really quick over to uh, this address to show you that we had uh, roughly 15,307 BTC move uh, worth about 657.8.9 million dollars and uh, the vast majority went to this address I'll make it a little bigger just for a moment right here you can see almost all of it outside of 80 Bitcoin went to this address here um, and we can even investigate this address and we see that it's only had three transactions all receptions of Bitcoin uh, the last two were very, very tiny, worth $1.10 and $417.90. Uh, and then all of a sudden they got a $654.4 million deposit. So without any evidence that it has moved address, moved any Bitcoin out, uh, it's sitting now with roughly $654 million worth of BTC. And that's quite interesting. So. Uh, before we go into the on-chain potential consequences of this and see exactly how this might have moved anything of significance, let's just take a look at the model, which is what helped me discover it today, and I, I know other people saw it as well. Um, but when I check, uh, you know, daily content and things to post about, uh, I often look at our top transactions model here, which you'll see the link for and directions for. In the description of this video in case you're interested in having it for yourself and using it to your liking I'll, I'll show a little bit of application for it shortly uh, but you can see here the Bitcoin line is off the charts uh, the black line designates that it's the latest day which was uh, January 16th which the according to UTC it just the the day closed about two hours ago from the time of this recording um, and then we also see a couple others like Injective Protocol with a transaction over 20 million and Render Token with a transaction over 15 million. So we'll look at those momentarily as well. Um, but in the meantime, um, you can also look over, you can see how each of these columns has a uh, label for whatever asset it is. And then it tells you uh, what day it had one of its top transactions. I have it set right now, and this is modifiable, to show any transactions in these white spaces that are a top five transaction over the past three months. So you can see, for example, Avgachi had a $992,000 transaction on January 14th. Airswap, $235,000 transaction on January 13th. And if I go ahead and scroll over to Bitcoin here for a moment, you can see the it's the calculation is slightly different because Bitcoin has changed since the time of that transaction. It, here it shows it's 657 million. Uh, but regardless, this yellow square indicates that it is supposed to be a non-exchange address moving to a non-exchange address. Now, I can't guarantee the validity of this, uh, but especially with Bitcoin where there's so much anonymity, it may be just be an unknown address going to an unknown address, which will default as yellow. But um, there's also a green square if it is a ex known exchange address moving to a non-exchange address. Uh, it's orange if it's an exchange address moving to another exchange address. And it's red 
if it's a non-exchange address moving to an exchange address, the colors sort of represent the danger level with red being worrisome if you see a huge amount of coins moving to from self-custody or some sort of staking wallet to an exchange address. Yeah, that's that's scary. Uh, the opposite is, is not so scary if you see a bunch of coins moving from an exchange into self-custody. Um, but regardless, that's how the, the setup of this model is. Um, I'll come back to this model momentarily, but I want to show Bitcoin now on Santiment and give you an understanding of where we sit now uh, after that big move. So for starters, age consumed, you'll notice this big spike that happened today. This is the largest amount of coins moved multiplied by how old the coins were. That's what age consumed is. It's multiplying those two factors together and the age consumed is 102.48 million, which is the largest spike since January 31st of 2022. And that is a pretty significant uh, milestone when we're talking about just about two years since we last saw an age consumed spike of this magnitude. Now on top of that, we can actually see the supply and exchanges staying pretty well set. I'll zoom in here really quick. And it's, it, this is a good sign. So even though we, we don't know specifically the origin and nature of those wallets, we do know that according to the latest day, which has just updated in the last couple hours for the full day of, of data, we can see that the uh, supply and exchange is actually just ticked down very so slightly indicating this likely was not a move related to a whole bunch of coins moving to exchanges. So that's, that's a good thing, right? That could potentially spell uh, a high probability of a, a potential sell-off that would send down Bitcoin and all of crypto by association. The other thing I see is that the mean dollar invested age line took another dip down, which is a very good sign. You can see it's been dropping down since late November here. And if you follow some of our content, you'll know that mean dollar invested age when the curve is going down for a significant amount of time, that is usually indicative that we may very well be in a bull cycle. It, it drastically increases the probability of prices continuing to go up, assuming this line is going down as the price is going up, as it has been since mid-October. So the mean dollar invested age line had one of its biggest drops. This is the biggest single day drop uh, in quite some time. Uh, and that's a very good thing. And if we zoom out once again, let's just go to the last year. Yeah, I mean, even going back to late October, arguably, this was when the mean dollar vested age uh, really started to be in a bit of a downswing. It flattened out a little in November and then more and more dormant coins moved. And that is a very good sign uh, that we could continue to move north, assuming there's plenty of other factors favoring Bitcoin to be able to grow in market cap. If we now look at the various tiers of sharks and whales, we start with sharks, 10 to 100 BTC. These are, you know, very, very large wallets uh, with anywhere between right now $430,000 up to $4.3 million. And they've actually been moving down pretty significantly. The 100 to 1,000 really dropped down significantly. These are kind of the smaller to mid-sized whales with 4.3 million all the way up to uh, $43 million. And then we see that the 1,000 to 10,000, they're actually beginning to get richer. Ever since January 2nd, they've really captured a lot of the supply that they had initially dropped back in early to mid-December. And then finally, we see the 10,000 to 100,000 BTC wallets, and they're moving up as well, for the most part. They still have a ways to go to start getting back to where they were uh, in April and May of 2023. But, you know, we put them all together. Let's say we just go to merge here and go 10 to 100, 100 to 1,000, 1,000 to 10,000, and 10,000 to 100,000, which that last one we don't normally include because it's going to be mostly exchanges by our estimation. Uh, but regardless, you can see 
it's at least not moving down as of now. It's been sliding for quite some time. Obviously, prices have been going up despite that, but just keep that in mind. And really, this summary is just how we kind of give some context to what that big transaction you know, might have done to the landscape of Bitcoin's network. At least on the surface, I'm not seeing any big caution flags. So, you know, we might get excited about a big transaction or we might get super fearful, but not until we really have the context in front of us do we really know how to react. There could be some upcoming news as to what the nature of this transaction was. It doesn't happen often when it comes to Bitcoin. You'll hear about the nature of other altcoin moves a lot more often. But Bitcoin, you know, it's it's pretty private, and that's why a lot of whales like it. Who knows, though? We'll see. Now, going back to the top transactions table here for a moment, I also want to look at Injective, which I mentioned had a 20 plus million dollar transaction. So let's take a look at that now. Uh, according to the model, it's two unknown addresses or just a non-exchange going to another non-exchange address. But what we see here is actually nothing special in terms of the transaction volume, despite the $20 million move. Uh, that's not necessarily a bad thing. I'm a little concerned about the fact that supply and exchanges did move up a little bit, um, and there wasn't really any sign of an age-consumed spike either. So really not much of a factor here. We can even look at those same tiers, which are going to be worth way less dollars, but this is really just... Um, we'll take the brown off because that's going to be too small. But if we look at 100 to 1,000 INJ wallets, these are small sharks. Um, moving up slightly, the 1,000 to 10,000, starting to move up slightly a little bit, but not much. But here's where I'm concerned. The 10,000 to 100,000 INJ wallets, they've been moving backwards. They've been dropping pretty significantly. And if we overlay price on here, And I'll just make this into a bar so it's differentiated from the tiers. Yeah, I mean, Injective had that huge, huge December where it really climbed and then it had one final big bounce uh, last week. And it's kind of been ranging ever since. So based on the context here, I don't see anything scary about that big transaction that happened today. But the shark and whale tiers haven't really been too active in in terms of accumulation and that would make me a bit concerned about injective continuing to go on its torrid run that it had it had been enjoying especially since uh, early december now finally we have one more i mentioned let's take a look at render by the way i'm holding down shift and just scrolling down on my mouse wheel for those who are wondering how I'm, I'm moving right to left on Google Sheets, it's a really handy way of maneuvering around a sheet without having to go down to this scroll bar down here. Um, so Renders actually had two big transactions in the past week. One back on the 10th, which was a Sunday. I'm uh, sorry, a Monday, excuse me. No, one more time. It was a Wednesday. My, my math is not fully there right now. Um, so last Wednesday, a big $17 million transaction, and then today, Tuesday, uh, there was a $15.7 million transaction, both unknown wallets. Um, regardless, if we take a look at Render really quick, we see something a little more concerning here, and that is a huge move upwards. You can see that it's happened a few times. Um, way back in, in mid-November, there was a big upswing in supply and exchanges, and that actually did not stop the price from going up, which is rare. Usually a big upswing is a warning sign uh, that something might be occurring. It was also the largest day here on November 16th of transaction volume that we saw. And then it quickly moved back down, which is a really good sign, and you can see how right from that day, prices blasted off uh, over the next five weeks, going up 68% and then it eventually topped. You can see two big uh, age-consumed spikes right here, indicating there was a lot of dormant tokens moving. This very likely were 
in hindsight was a, a sell-off uh, due to the fact that they occurred right at the top here. And then you can see it started to go back down. Uh, supply exchanges actually got really low here. And then ever since last week, we see that the supply and exchanges went from, uh, it looks like, ah, the, the numbers are a little bit weird at the moment, but regardless, we can see that the supply and exchanges went up significantly during this time. And this is actually the highest that it's been over the past three months. But we don't see too much on-chain transaction volume or age consumed this time around. So it lessens the likelihood of like a big price shift coming up. Regardless, I'm still going to be more worried than I am excited anytime I see supply and exchanges going up significantly. And I apologize that sentiment has some um, messed up uh, actual units at the moment because there is certainly more than 0.1% of render supply and exchanges right now. So we will be getting that fixed in the near future. We are working on that. Um, other things to look at really quick, let me overlay the price of render onto the tiers of sharks and whales. And I'm just gonna click bars. So we can see that the very small, uh, the very small, uh, I guess if you wanna call them sharks, I wouldn't even classify them as shark. Yeah, these are just um, not even dolphins because it's like $30, $30 up until $300. But here you're starting to get into really small sharks and they've kind of flattened out a little bit over the past four to five days. The 1,000 to 10,000 render tokens, they've actually been starting to go down for the first time in a long time. You can see how much the yellow line here has correlated with the price upswing. So I'm, I'm concerned by the fact that they are starting to go down over the past couple of weeks uh, after being on such a run here. Even here, going back to mid-October all the way up until late October, this two week run really assisted in the price rising and then all of a sudden they dump and you can see how the price flattens out, starts to rise a little and then you know they, they start to FOMO in it appears. Uh, there could be plenty of other reasons why render went up. Don't just look at one specific tier exclusively, but they're related to these top transactions that we're looking at. So I wanted to kind of give them a, an extra focal point today. And then finally, the, the, I guess we would call them very small whales to large sharks, 10,000, 100,000. They're pretty flat. And let's add one more tier because render is only priced at, at about $4 at the moment. So this is $400,000 up to $4 million. This will be the last one we look at. And yeah, they've actually been starting to go down. Let's just remove everything else so we don't get too cluttered here. Yeah, so the, the 100,000 of 1 million render coin wallets, this appears to be a lot of exchanges. It's hard to tell, but you can see that they went up significantly during this big rally. If I just hold down shift during all of this, I mean, look at how much orange, the orange line went up during that span. Um, and now they're starting to drop off a little bit, uh, not significantly, but concerningly. Um, so I'd be keeping an eye on that, considering this is probably the tier. Um, actually, I take it back, it would have to be a tier like this 1 million to 10 million uh, coins that made that move, uh, because of the fact that we know that the render uh, move in terms of USD was $15 million. So the only tier that would have that would be the 1 million to 10 million uh, tier right here, or even something larger. I understand that's it could be a liquidity wallet for an exchange that could move it. But regardless, we generally don't look at exchange related tiers because they almost go inverse or have no correlation to price. And I'd say this red line is looking pretty inverse to the price of render. As you can see, it's gone down as the price went up and then all of a sudden it went up as the price went down. So that's just a little tidbit about studying whale uh, wallets a little bit. Now, there are certainly 
you know, bridge wallets that come into play and staking wallets. That is not for this video. We can look at specifically labeled wallets in future videos if that's something that would interest you. Uh, but there is certainly no guarantee that these are all just regular human owned wallets. Some have greater purposes for their respective networks. Uh, and just keep that in mind when we do this kind of analysis. But I really recommend checking out the top transactions table. I think it can really benefit a lot of people uh, to kind of understand exactly which tokens are suddenly seeing a big, you know, outburst of coins being moved because they can often maybe not necessarily be related to like a big price turning point all of a sudden, but it could be the beginning of, you know, that mean dollar invested age line starting to turn downwards, which would imply that a bull cycle is upcoming. So it's a really valuable model. Link is in the description along with the instructions. And I hope you enjoyed this kind of video. It's a little different from what we normally do, but I thought I'd update you. And I hope you have a good rest of your evenings or nights or whatever time it is when you're watching this on replay. Take care. Talk soon.